So here's what I want to do really quick. I want to preach part five. I'm going to conclude this sermon series of the rebirth and the rebuild series, I think. Uh, God is still, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm chewing a lot on this. And, uh, but how many of you know it's power when, when, when God's people come together, unify, and start speaking the same language? What does that look like? What, 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 does that, what does that look like when God's people start coming together, unifying, have the same vision, same heartbeat? What does that look like? I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like an Acts chapter 2 church. What God created, how he designed her, can still be today. How many of you know the first church that God created? It's probably pretty important. It's pretty, pretty important. And we're going to experience a harvest. And I want to prophesy this. You say, Brian, I don't believe in prophecy. Well, you don't believe in the Bible. I want to prophesy there is a harvest coming in the latter end. Greater than it was in the former. There's going to be an outpouring. You can write this in your little black book. You don't watch this. I don't care if y'all believe me or not. I'm just agreeing with the Bible. There's going to be an outpouring like never, ever, 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 ever before in Jesus Christ's name. And God will get all the glory. Churches won't, man won't, but it's going to be such a powerful anointing that God by himself will get all the glory. I'm telling you, I'm preaching good. He's going to get all the glory. He's worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. But one thing I think about all the time, will I, will I get to heaven and have to stand before God and God said, I had all this for you, but you just wouldn't believe it. You was afraid to step out of the boat and walk on water. And you, you, was, a, you was afraid, you were scared. And God said, I had all this harvest for you. I had all this manifestation for you. I put my son on the cross, not for you to just to be average and mediocrity and barely get by. When I nailed him to the cross, all things become possible with you. Church, you've got to believe this stuff. If not, let's go home. It's real or let's go home. Either Genesis to Revelation is real or let's go home. It's real. I'd give God praise today. Every word, every T that is crossed, every dot that is I, every I that is, y'all know what I'm talking about. It's real. It's real. And I'm telling you, in Jesus Christ's name, some of y'all are going to be really nervous in these last days. Because God's going to show up and you ain't going to know if it's him or not. Let me go on and preach this. Go ahead and turn your Bible, John chapter 4. Whoo, I'm excited. Hallelujah, I'm excited. John chapter 4, I'm, I got a lot of verses. I'm not apologizing for it, but I'm going to set the platform. I may get through this sermon. If not, we'll go part 6 next week. John chapter 4, verse 7 through 11. Now, y'all can just hang with me. Let me read this over your life. Those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God's word will not come back void. Don't let it come back void today. John chapter 4, verse 7 through 11. The Bible says, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food, uh, buy a happy meal. And the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For the Jews don't even associate or speak the same language or have anything to do with the Samaritans. Verse 10, and Jesus said to her, if you knew the gift of God, come on somebody, if you knew how the gift of God it, and who it is that asked for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Hallelujah. Living water. Living water. And sir, here's the woman. She said to him, you, you don't even have a bucket or anything to draw water with. And the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Verse 13. I'm, I'm going down a little bit. Verse 13. Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Hallelujah, verse 14. But whoever drinks the water I give them, oh, hallelujah, will never thirst again. Indeed, the water I give them will be like a spring of living water welling up, bubbling up, springling up into eternal life. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Let's go down to verse 23. I gotta, I gotta be good. 
Yet a time is coming. I believe it's here. I believe it's I don't know how much longer Jesus Christ is going to sit there. This world's in bad shape, but watch this. Yet a time is coming, is now, has come. When the true worshipers, you are worthy of it all. I don't like that song. I ain't talking to you then. Will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshiper. Those are the kind of people that the Bible says, Allison, that God seeks for. Woo! It's going to be good in here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. God is a spirit. Verse 24. God is a spirit and his worshipers must worship the spirit and truth. Then, just then, verse 27, just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking to the woman. But no, but no one asked, what do you want? No one asked the Samaritan lady. Like Why are you talking to her? These are disciples, followers of Jesus Christ. Why, Jesus, are you talking to this woman? Are you for real? And said to the people, come, I love this, verse 29. And then, we're going to go back to 28. Then leaving her the water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, verse 29, come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town, they came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, verse 31, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, what about that happy meal? You want to eat something? Verse 32, this is, I, that's why I got to read the Bible, y'all. Because if I don't, I'm just like, <laughs> verse 32. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you don't even know anything about. <laughs> then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? <laughs> my God, Houston, we got a problem. Verse 34, my food, Jesus said, Whoa, watch this, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his works. That's some good preaching right there. He says, don't you have a saying? It's still four months. Boy, that's the church. In four months, we'll do this. In four months, we'll do that. In four months, we'll do that. But watch this. It'll be a harvest. And I tell you, open up your eyes. Look and see the harvest coming. For it is ripe unto harvest. Listen to me. I know that's a lot of reading. But let me do- drop this in your spirit. It's worth it. <laughs> Here's what I want to get in your spirit this morning. I want you to lean in and listen to me very carefully. What the disciples, hallelujah, called a problem, which was the Samaritans, watch this, God called a harvest. What the disciples said, oh God, here comes the problem. God looked at them and said, oh no, 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 no. I call that a harvest. I'm going to preach really good, watch this. And what we call, watch this. A problem, they don't look like us, they don't act like us, they don't talk like us, they don't have the same color skin like us, this, that, and the other wasn't born on that side of the track. All of a sudden, what we call a problem, having caused a harvest. I'm going to go somewhere, listen, everybody wants a harvest without a problem. Everybody wants a harvest without a problem. What's this? How can you have victory without a problem? Watch this. How can you, how can you say I am more than a conqueror with no conflict? I'm preaching better this. Hallelujah. Everybody wants a harvest, but they don't want a problem. And the, and the problem that you see is not really a problem. It's a harvest. I'm going to reverse this curse today. Here's what I have finally figured out about Jesus Christ. Now I want you to put this on the big screen. Your biggest problem is God's greatest opportunity. Your biggest problem, they may be in front of you right now today. They may be sitting behind you today. You may have met them out in the atrium today. They may have a different color pigmentation of your skin. They may be on a different side of the track. They may be a drug dealer, a prostitute. I'm preaching good. But your problem is God's harvest. Mm -hmm. Your greatest problem. Your greatest problem. I feel though I can't get away from that. Is God's greatest opportunity. So here's my prayer for all of us. Y'all ready for this? Yeah, it's so good. I want all of us. at the Elkhorn Baptist Church and those viewing by Facebook or down at the Taylor County Detention. Listen, jail does not define them. Amen. Your problem, your past, I'm preaching, does not define you. 
I need some people to look at your neighbor and say, you're full of Jesus. You're full of grace. You're full of love. You're full of mercy. I'm just telling y'all, you can look at me all you want to sideways. I'm telling y'all, your problem is God's harvest. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want all of us, all of us, all of us in here today to see what God can do through you. <laughs> I love the story in John chapter 4. I love probably of all the chapters in the Bible, besides in Psalms 91, this is probably one of my favorite chapters in the Bible because I was a Samaritan. Now, I know some of y'all good. You, you, don't, you don't thin. You think good. You got money in your pocket. You was born on the right side of the tracks. But here's one, one thing we all got in common. We're, we're in need of a Savior. Amen. We're in need of a Savior. Jesus meets this woman at the well and said, I love this. Uh, will you give me a drink? I love this. It was so good. Jesus had a conversation. The, the, the Samaritans, the, 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 the Jews went into town for a happy meal. And they left Jesus on the mission field. He said, will you give me a drink? And I love this, and this don't say this in the Bible, but one commentator said this, and it leaped in my spirit, Jimmy. He said, uh, this woman said, I, I, I don't have a bucket. You don't have a bucket. Watch this. I believe Jesus was so, so religious. He said these words. Um, I believe he looked at her and said, oh, you're my bucket. I'm going to use you as my bucket. Water in the Bible, whether you believe this or not, study your Bible. Water in the Bible is symbolic for Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. God said, she said, where's your bucket? The, the well is deep. Some of y'all got some deep issues. And you can look pretty. You can act pretty. You can even know the Bible pretty. But some of you got a deep well that only the Holy Ghost can reach. He said, I'm going to use you as my bucket. I love this. I'm going to lower the bucket, you, into the water. Let the water get inside the bucket. And I'm going to send you back to Samaria. Some of you have a job you hate. What if you're not there for you, but you're there for somebody on the bucket list? Look at your neighbor and say, oh, you're you on God's bucket list. So tell somebody, you, you, you're up on God's bucket list. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you are up on God's bucket bucket list. And here's, here we are. All we are is a bunch of buckets holding the water, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and God says, I'm going to use you to change your workplace. I'm going to use you to change this church. I'm going to use you to change your children. How many of y'all know, hallelujah, that water can change a marriage? That water can change a church? Water can change a mindset. Water can change an alcoholic. The water is the Holy Spirit. And without the Holy Spirit, you can't do anything. You can't even be born again without the Holy Spirit drawing you. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. I believe when Jesus said, the water I'm getting ready to give you. Listen to me. How do you know you're saved? Because you don't thirst for the world no more. Come on, Christians. How do you know? You used to run to the bar. But now on weekends or something in you said, man, I can't do that no more. I can't go there no more. I don't even want, I don't like that no more. There's something inside of you. Come on, somebody. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. He said, I'm going to use you as my bucket. I'm going to fill you with my water, which is the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to send you back to a place that you call a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's so funny, Mark. This woman went back to Samaria. I love this. And she said, come, I want to show you a man. And they're back there going, I bet you do want to show me a man. <laughs> I worked hard on this. Don't y'all look at me like that. She, she had five husbands and she was living with a man. Y'all read your Bible. It's a good Bible study. I bet you do want to show me a man. No, no, not that kind of man. This man met me at a place nobody else would meet me. This man told me, I'm going to use you as a bucket. I'm going to fill you with my presence, my water, and I'm going to use you to change your problem. 
It's so good, so good. They believed it. And they started following her. She led them back to the water hole. All we are is one bucket telling another bucket where to find living water. All we are is one bucket telling another bucket where to find living water. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Hallelujah. Here's when your life will change. Y'all ready? We complicate the Bible. We really do. We com- Here's when you will change your life. When you become a bucket for Jesus. And let others see what God has filled you with. Come on, somebody. When you become a bucket and you allow your problem to see what God has filled you with. No wonder some people can be on their dying bed and they can look up to heaven and say, God, it's not my will, but it's your will. Whenever you're ready, I'm ready. There's something, that, that's called bucket ministry. There's something about when Christians can take a licking and keep on ticking. There's some, how can we do it? It's called the water. All we are is a bucket. Let down in the water. And now God says, I'm going to send you back to your biggest problem. And you're going to see a harvest come from that. Here's what, here's what else. Whatever you're filled with is what you will produce. Oh. Whatever you're filled with. If you're filled, watch this, with anger, you're going to hate people. This means yes. Has some pre- I'm out, preacher. You done read my mail. Yeah, if you're filled with Jesus, watch this. You're going to love. You're going to love. You're going to love. You're going to love the alcoholic. You're going to love the prostitute. You're going to love the woman at the well. You're going to love the people you work with. You're going to love crazy people at church. So tired of everybody saying, yeah, I know Jesus, but you hate. You're so in discord. Woo! Hallelujah! You're acting silly. No. When you're full of the water, sometimes you got to shout. When you're full of the water, something in you will spring up. I hope the whole world gets baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'll say it again. I hope the whole world gets baptized in the Holy Ghost. I hope the President of the United States gets baptized in a bucket of water. I pray every church gets baptized in the Holy Ghost. Woo! That's right. Well, Brian, I got the Holy Ghost. Is it water or is it fire? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Whatever you're invested in is what you'll get returned in. Whatever you're invested in, that's what you're going to get a return in. Y'all listen to me. I'm trying to preach really good. Listen to this. Isn't it interesting his disciples went into town for a happy meal and they left Jesus on the mission field and I, the harvest. And most people, listen to this, just think about the meal. Uh-oh. They just think about the meal and they never think about the mission, the harvest. See, some people just come to church and want to eat. <laughs> you just want to eat up the praise? You just want, I, I worked hard on this, y'all. You just want to eat up the worship. You want to eat up the word. You want to eat up a Sunday school class, small group. Eat it up. Eat it up. Eat it up. Eat it up. Worried about a happy meal. But never get involved or you never get connected to the mission or the harvest. Look up. The harvest is here. They're coming. And watch this. It's not coming the way you think it's coming. It may be. It may be at a gas station, you're pumping gas by yourself, minding your own business. And all of a sudden, somebody looks at you, you've got an Elkhorn shirt on, they're going to say, you go to that church? That's one bucket talking to another bucket that needs to be filled. Y'all understand, listen to me, we are not here to be the richest church in South Central. We're not here to be the biggest church in South Central. All we are is one bucket, telling another bucket, we're to find living water. Yeah, guys, we need some living water. It's living. It's not dead. It's not stagnant. God is alive. God is alive. God is alive. And it's my job, it's my assignment today to tell you what you look as a problem. God looks as a harvest. 
I'm going to say it again. Because some of you think your children are the problem. What if I told you? What if I told you? What if I told you? What if I told you that God may be using the problem as a harvest? Huh. That person you can't get along with gets up on your right side, left side, every side. That problem that you say is a problem, God says, that's my harvest. If you see, watch this, watch this. I'm going to mess some churches up right now. I'm going to mess them up. I'm gonna mess. If all you see is a white church or a black church, that's not God's church. God's church comes in many different shapes and colors and sizes. They had their Jews. We had a Jewish woman one, here, one time here. A Jew. We got red and yellow, black and white, Hispanic, Asians. Destiny. Now, you may have to get on a plane and fly 21 hours. Be careful what you pray for. God, we love all people. There may be a drug addict sitting right beside you today. Boy, I'm glad I'm preaching this at Elkhorn. Because it'd be a quick, quick business meeting after I get finished with this one. Yeah. Listen, if you never sow into the mission of heaven or Elkhorn Baptist Church, watch this. All you're doing is eating. All you are is a happy meal. You might as well work at McDonald's and put a hat on. <laughs> it's okay. My question to all of us is this. Here it is. What level of the harvest do you want to live? Here it is. What level of the harvest do you want to live? Is it the meal or the mission? Is it the meal? Or is it the mission? Because somebody's eating today. Somebody's eating today. The only way, listen to me, that you can live the mission and see the harvest is if you become God's bucket. Y'all got me? Somebody say amen. The only way, the only way, the only way, the only way you can live the mission, not the meal, the, the, the mission, and see the harvest <laughs> is if you become God's bucket. If you become God's bucket, if you become God's bucket, if you're willing for God to take the bucket, you, to lower you into a situation that you've been calling a problem for a long time and fill you with his presence. How many of you know, how many of y'all know, it's so hard to come out mad if you've been in God's presence? How many of y'all know, it's so hard to say, I hate you when you come out of God's presence? So listen, I'm asking you today, are you the meal or are you the mission? Why are y'all here today? To eat? Or to be a bucket? Boy, I'm preaching good. To eat? Eat up the praise. And I, I can't stand this. When someone says, I didn't get anything out of church today. Ooh! You mean to tell me you come to a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled church of God? And walk out the same? Amen. You mean to tell, you know why you didn't get anything? Because you didn't give anything. Hey, I had to preach. If you give something, you get in the mission of something. I better get back here. Jesus said these words. Open up your eyes. Open up your eyes. Look up and see the harvest is coming. And the harvest, watch, did not look like the Jews thought it would. The Jews were all about the Jews. <laughs> and watch this. The harvest never looks like you think it should. Whew. Because their harvest, watch this. Their harvest was wrapped up in a problem. I'm going to say this because this is what God laid on my heart. Listen to me. The Jews and the Samaritans hated each other. Everybody say they hated each other. You think racism is a problem today? Go back 2,000 years. We've always dealt with this. But what is the answer? But you got to be the bucket. You got to be lowered into a problem that you've always said is a problem. And God will fill you up. I'm preaching. He'll fill you with his presence. And all of a sudden. That problem becomes your harvest. That problem becomes your best friend. That problem in a, in a, in a relationship, in a marriage, 
What if you are not the bucket? Everybody wants to blame everybody else. Y'all realize, listen to me, 2,000 years ago, that was racism. And listen, some of the biggest racial barriers of the world that have ever seen was 2,000 years ago. The Jews and the Samaritans, think about this. I studied this. They had 500 years of hostility toward each other. And y'all want to hear something crazy? <laughs> this is crazy. Jesus said, uh, open your eyes. Look up. Because what you thought was a problem, I consider my harvest. Come on, somebody. I'm going to stay there until y'all get that. What you thought was a problem, God says, no, no. That's a harvest. <laughs> what if you viewed <laughs> your problem as a harvest? Ooh. What if you viewed that family member, can I preach this a little bit? Instead of being a problem, you view them as a harvest. Uh-oh. Boy, will you tell when God's up in the house preaching? Yeah, that job that you hate. What if you viewed it as a harvest? We make everything about us. We're Americans. Chew the back, chew the back, spit. We're, we're, we're Americans. We're Americans. Dr. W.A. Criswell, Southern Baptist pastor, 2001, convention said these words. The Holy Spirit could walk out of your church and some of you wouldn't even know it. I'm telling you, all we are is one bucket. <laughs> telling another bucket where to find the living, not the stagnant, not the dead, not the contaminated water. Where to find the living water. I'm just telling y'all, I'm, I'm making a confession today. Until you go dip, dip, <laughs> you'll stay as you are. But what you've been viewing as a problem, I'm telling y'all, the God told me that what we view as a problem is his harvest. Some of you have been wanting God to make you a better person. Lord, make me a better person. <laughs> Some of y'all want to be better parents. Some of y'all want to be better husbands. Some of y'all want to be better wives. Better youth group. I've heard this a thousand times. <laughs> what if God said, Lord, what if you said, God, just make my heart better. Make my heart better, God. Let me love the way you want to love. I hear that all the time. Yeah, but what if God is using the hardest thing in your life? The hardest thing in your life. You're in a mess right now. What you've been viewing as a problem, God says, I love them as much as I love you. Because we view people on their past where they're at, what they've done, who they're with, I'm preaching good. And God says, I know where you've been, I know your past, I know how you've gossiped, I know what you've said, but I love you. <laughs> Woo! Preach that preacher, I think I will. Uh, God says, what if I'm going to use your problem to soften your heart and make you a better person? We run from problems. God runs to problems. We run from people. Walmart, aisle 13. That's a special aisle to me. I love this story because this woman had five husbands. And listen, we, we as church to say, if they've been married before, God can't use them. She changed a whole city for God's sake. You may be a bucket, but what you full of? <laughs> I love preaching. Yeah, because you're full of something. You're full of yourself. You're full of your ideas. Your suggestions, what church should look like. Oh, really? 
What would you have done in the upper room when 120 people full of the Holy Ghost started speaking in tongues? Would you have said, time out, time out, time out, time out. There's ladies up here. What would you have done? Listen, either it's real, let's go home. What would y'all have done? Well, hold on now. Who's interpreting that one? What would y'all have done? I think about stuff like you said, Allison. God, make me a better person. God, use me for your glory. God, make me a better husband. God, make me an awesome father. And God's like, okay. But it's not going to come the way you look at it. It's not, your miracle is not going to come the way you view it or the way that you see it. Because I'm going to use your children. How many of y'all can, honest to God, say, God has used my babies to open my eyes once, twice, three or four, five, ten times? You know why? Because they come with no reservations. They'll tell you just like it is. I was doing a revival one time. It was embarrassing. I got through and I was at the altar and a little kid came up there. She's about seven years of age. And she wanted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I said, praise God, I'll lead you to Jesus. And man, as I was praying, she looked up into prayer and she said, your breath stinks. <laughs> I still remember that. It, it was true. But kids, they're so honest. We get a, like adults. And I'll tell you what. They had, here's, they had five husbands. And now they're living with the man. And a little kid go, but I love them. I love them. We have dropped the bucket of love. We have dropped the bucket of love. Here's the deal. Y'all ready? I'm not going to judge you. Because all I am, one bucket, tell another bucket where to find living water. Some of y'all need to get up and get over yourself. Some of y'all need to forgive people. Some of y'all need to let down the bucket of, 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 of unforgiveness. Let God fill you up with forgiveness. Some of y'all are going to grow to be an old person. <laughs> and you're going to be sitting in Elkhorn Baptist Church. Easy. That's Mike Kiger. <laughs> but here's what I know. Mike Kiger, he's 75 years old. He got born again, saved. He was in that baptistry. And he got baptized, filled with a bucket of water. And now he's making a difference at the healing place. He's not keeping it. He's not keeping it by himself. What God has done for y'all, you mean to tell me you can be quiet about it? You mean to tell me after you was once lost, dying, going to hell, going to burn in hell forever, and you say, no, I'm introverted? We got to wake up. We got to look up because the harvest is here. It don't look like y'all think because we're going to have red, yellow, black, white, Chinese, Japanese, all of these. Oh, everybody. Pinto cars, GMC trucks, Cadillac Escalades. I'm talking somebody received that. What I love about this, praise him, you guys come, I'm finished. Um, I think here in just a minute. Um, she said she went back to Samaria let me, let me take you, let me introduce you to a man that changed my life. He read my mail. He told me everything about me and he did not judge me. Matter of fact, he used me as a bucket. He lowered me into the water. He filled me up with his spirit and he sent me back to tell you, come and see. Woo! Come and see. People out there should say, you know what? Not about Elkhorn, but man, God has so changed them. I've got to come and see what God is doing. Come on, somebody. So they all went and I love this. I love this. Because they, Mark, they said, they said uh, did somebody feed him? Why don't he want to eat? <laughs> and God said, the food that I have is not the food that you think I should eat. But by the way, look up. See? And as they looked up, Jimmy, they seen a bunch of Samaritans. A bunch of lost people. Coming to see Jesus. Coming to see Jesus. And what I love about this story, Jesus didn't stand up and go, oh, 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 oh. no, no, no. That is a Samaritan. They're lost. <laughs> Lord, they sleep around. He said, no, 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 come and see. I'll use you as a bucket. 
lower you into your situation that you've been calling a problem. I'll fill you with the sweet, holy presence of God and I'll send you back and you'll change your world. 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 So listen, what you've been calling a problem, God is calling a harvest. I'm done. Every problem, listen to me, every problem, if you're a note taker, every problem has a harvest. Woo! Every problem, y'all hear me? Every problem, y'all hear? I feel, every problem has a harvest. It's a harvest, it's a harvest. It's a harvest. (laughs) Every problem comes your way. Y'all need to ask God this question. Y'all ready? Every problem you're into right now, every situation you're into right now, it, right now, here's what I want us to do. Every problem that comes your way, you need to ask God this. W-T-H. W-T-H. Where's the harvest? Y'all got me? Because the devil does not, I can feel it right. The devil does not want me preaching this sermon. He does not want me preaching. Can y'all imagine if we go from a happy meal mindset to a mission field mindset, what this church will look like? <laughs> if, we, if we just keep saying, eat, 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 eat. Happy meal, happy meal, happy meal. No onions, extra pickles. If we become a mission-minded church, mission-minded church, mission-minded church, Mission-minded church, look and see the harvest is coming. You have been looking at your problem as a problem, and God says, I look at your problem as a harvest. WTH, COVID-19, my God. I get sick of that junk. We talk about COVID-19 more than we talk about Jesus Christ. And Elkhorn, y'all lean in and listen, I'm your pastor. Talk about Jesus. Let him take you down. If you've got fear in your life about COVID, let him fill you with Jesus. And you'll say, you know what? I know it's out there, but I know somebody that's in me that's bigger than that old stinking issue. WTH, 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 WTH. Where's the harvest? Marriage problems. Listen. So simple. Right now, whatever you're dealing with, W-T-H. Brian, you you don't understand. W-T-H. Where's the harvest? Where's school? Is getting ready to get back in session. Y'all pray for our schools. Y'all pray for the schools. We need them back in there. I need my daughter to get up out of the house and get back up in school. Now, how many of y'all felt that one? WTH. Even though in the midst of a, a COVID season, where's the harvest? Where's the harvest? Where's the harvest? Y'all, did y'all get the word today? Did y'all, did y'all really get the word today? So, let me reverse this really quick while they're playing in the background. I want to show y'all some harvest. I couldn't wait to get to this part right here. I want to show y'all some harvest. Because some of y'all are missing the harvest because all you're doing is looking at the problem so today I come by as your pastor to reverse that curse up in your mind and show you some harvest y'all ready for some harvest I mean y'all ready to see some harvest stuff let's do let's do this 2020 the most craziest year craziest year craziest year that I've ever seen out 24 years as a pastor 2020 how many of y'all would testify was crazy 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 year so I'm going to give you a 2020 year in review. And if this don't make a Baptist shout, you need water in the bucket. We had a loan balance January the 1st, 2020. 900, listen, $993,818.19. Almost a million dollars. On January the 4th, January the 4th, listen to this. 2021, a year later, now we made all kinds of payments in between, but we made a payment of $26,586.70. 
That made, listen to this, that made the new balance $751,656.41. So, watch this. This is the harvest. Because we're not a rich church. Yeah, we are. God just corrected me. Golly, can't get away with anything. How many of you know we are a rich church? If you've got Jesus Christ in your life, you're the richest person alive. Amen. Holy Ghost just corrected me. Brian, does he speak? Yep, he just did. He just did. Listen to this. In one year, everybody say one year. <laughs> we paid $242,161.78 toward this sanctuary. Wow. That's what we, that's above and beyond. But that's because you tithe. If you don't tithe, watch this. You're getting ready to watch. All you're doing is eating. Oh, that's so good. If you're not a tither, if you don't give to Jesus, what, the, what is a tithe? 10%. What, really? No, God just corrected me again. Yeah, boy, he's preaching good today. He owns it all. He said, you keep 90. And just give me 10. Boy, how to preach. And when you do that, you'll have things like that happening in your life. Listen to this. Elkhorn Baptist Church, the total offerings will come through this church in 2020. This is overwhelming. So good. The total offerings that come through this church was $886,801.21. Come on, somebody. It's good. Wow. Unreal. All right. Where did it go? We every month. Every month. I got to tell you all this because people ask crazy questions like that. Every month we put out a, a, a report. We cross the T's. We dot the I's. This is where the money's going. This is what the salaries are for the pastors. This is what our electric bill is. This is our van ministry. This is So Cafe. This is everything you want to know. If y'all want to know, it's out there. Our finance team does a great job at this church to keep us informed of what's going on in this church. And thank our finance team for that. Now watch this. 18 people went through our 5G membership class. 18, you say, Brian, that's not a lot. That's a lot during COVID-19 because y'all weren't even supposed to be here. <laughs> 18 people went through the 5G membership class. Elkhorn Baptist Church, I love this part. This is, this is it. Had 21 baptisms. He's worthy of it all. 21 baptisms. In 2020. Listen to this. This is the greatest number. The greatest number. Because this number I'm getting ready to give you makes angels shout. This number I'm getting ready to give you makes heaven shout. And if this number don't make you shout, you ain't got no water in your bucket. Elkhorn Baptist Church had 42 salvations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay standing. And five salvations from Facebook Live. We had a total of 47 salvations in 2020. Come on. Amen. I need somebody to give Jesus some praise in this house for the harvest. For the harvest. Thank y'all for being a soul winner. Life changed up. Well, here's the deal. Here's how you know if you're eating a happy meal <laughs> or if you're on the mission field. Which one of those numbers are the most important to you? Because a lot of you, all about the numbers, all about the numbers, all about the numbers, all about, watch this. Whatever you need, if you're wanting a thousand people at this church, the harvest is here. Go get them. Well, I'm waiting for the pastors and the deacons. We're doing it. I try to win one person a day to Jesus Christ. Does it always work? Nope. 
but I go get them. I'm going to give hell, hell. So those numbers up there, which number impressed you the most? $886,000 or 47 salvations? That determines where you're at. All right. So here it is. Here's, here's the application. Y'all ready? I know we went a little bit long today. It's okay. And why do we think we got to put God in an hour and a half box? Why do we think we got to give God one hour to do what he wants to do? That's called a happy meal. Here, here's the application. Go from a meal-minded person to a mission-minded person. From a meal-minded person to a mission-minded person. And here's the clue. If you're sitting there going, I don't want to have for lunch, mama. You, you, you a happy meal Christian. How many times, listen to this. I wrote this down. How many times have you missed your mission? <laughs> because you was focused on the meal. So, I don't know where y'all are at. I know where I'm at as your pastor. My prayer for all of us is that we'd look up and you would see that the harvest is here. But that harvest will not come the way that you think it should come. Why do we expect lost people to act saved? They're going to act lost. Go get them. Go get them. Go to the highways, the byways, compelling them to come to the gospel of Jesus Christ. If they look like you, act like you, you probably don't want to go that direction. You're going to find somebody the opposite of you. I can just see the disciples now looking up and saying, Oh God, there's Samaritans. Yeah, that's your harvest. Oh God, my kid is far away from God. That's your harvest. Golly, school will never look the same. You're looking at a problem. I see a harvest. Healing place. Let me talk to y'all just for a little bit. Man, go get the harvest. Well, Brian, you don't know, man. They're messed up. <laughs> so am I. Go get the harvest. Go get the harvest. Go get the harvest. All right. This altar's open. My prayer, you can stay there if you want to. My prayer, listen. Come to this altar. Make your seat a pew what, or whatever. Make it an altar. Come to this altar. Make your seat an altar. And just pray, God, ask him this. Lord, am I meal-minded or am I mission-minded? Am I meal-minded or am I mission-minded? And God will answer you. And I want y'all to go get that harvest. Amen. Everybody say this. Go get the harvest. Everybody say this. Go get the harvest. In Jesus' name. Father God, I've done what you called me to do. Lord, fill this altar. Fill this place with your presence. Continue to run from the front to the back, side to side. Lord, we love you in this place to God. And I'm so, so thankful to God. You love Samaritans the same way you love Jews. God, you love sinners. The same way you love saints. So Lord, may this become a mission-minded church. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said.